We'd like to welcome on to the set Damari Carroll from the Brooklyn Nets. Good to have you here, my friend. I'm glad to be here, man. Okay, the reason we have you on the court right now is you're 6'8", 215, very versatile defender. Tell us what it's like defending someone like LeBron James who can do it all. Uh, I think defending somebody like LeBron or Steph, I think it all comes down to the pickup point, really. Um, LeBron, you want to be inside the three-point line and be more physical with him. With Steph, you almost want to be at the half court. So I think it depends <laughs> on the individual, really. How difficult is it to go from defending a wing like LeBron, like you said, to switching out on a guy like Steph Curry? It's, it's definitely different, uh, but in the end, you know, you got to get it get it done. Um, you got to look in the mirror and, and you know, got to face reality. And I feel like those two guys are top of our league, but, you know, playing those guys is great competition. Damari, for a guy who's focusing on defense the way you have throughout your career, how different is it now trying to guard in this league? You know, when you came in, the, f the floor wasn't stretched to half court. It wasn't stretched as far, you know, beyond the three-point line. How different is that now trying to adjust to that? Uh, it's very different. Uh, teams are stretching you far, far out. You know, everybody can shoot threes, one through five. So uh, it's kind of hard. You know, you got to try to run guys off the uh, three-point line. But now you can't just lock down a guy by yourself. You got to do it collectively as a team. But you got to try to be that first initial stopper and then you're hopefully your team can help you out. Let's talk a little bit, Damari, about this year and, and the Nets and the role that you're playing. You're score, scoring the basketball at a, a career clip. This is a very young team. You, you've been through some very unique battles in your career, and, and you're with a team that's you know, really looking towards you about being a professional, your approach on a daily basis. What is that relationship like for, for you and Kenny, and how are you helping translate that over to your teammates? It's great. You know, Kenny was with me when I was in Atlanta. I think he, was, he really helped jumpstart my career uh, with my development. And, um, you know, I just want to come in and try to help these young guys and lead by example. You know, I try to go out there and do it on the floor and do it off the floor. So uh, I just want to be a mentor, but also I want to, keep proving myself and keep showing my worth. I'm wondering, because you've had so many uh, different coaches, diverse coaches from your time, Memphis and Utah and then Bud in Atlanta, Coach Casey in Toronto and now Kenny, are you feeling like at this point in your career, especially knowing Kenny, the, the, the way you've known him uh, before it was that you got there, that, did you have a little bit more voice, that you have opportunities to help Ken, when Kenny's talking to you about some defensive things that you may have contributions that actually make it into the scouting report or the game plan to help you guys out? Kimmy is an open book. He really allows me to come in and, uh, you know, voice my opinion, talk to these young guys in, in front of him, in front of the coaches, whatever. I feel like we could change on defense at the end. He usually listens and he tries to apply, but Kenny's a great coach. I think that's one of his biggest uh, – positives is his communication with his players and I feel like that goes a long way. Well I'm pr probably super comfortable to see a familiar face in you to be able to translate those things over. I'm going to grab a ball say Koo, why don't you go up and play the point because <laughs> I don't want Damari Carroll guarding me. Yeah. Um, so you play at the point and if we could just talk two things Damari about your defensive mindset okay. The first thing we'll talk about is guarding maybe a non-threat at the three-point line and what it is that you start to think <laughs> about in terms Sorry, Seku, <laughs> about the, the scouting report and then his tendencies and how you're preparing for a player like this. So Seku's at the three, back up to the three-point line. I know you can't make it, Seku. <laughs> but let's say you're guarding him tomorrow. Can you just go through what it is that you would start to think about and, and the technique that you'd use? Uh, first, you know, I'm going to come with choppy feet and I'm going to try to give him space because he's not a non-threat three-point shooter. And I want to keep him pushed close to the outside. So, if you, short, so short side of the floor? Short side, because yeah. if he gets in the middle, everything breaks down. Right. So I, I want to make him come to me, you know, get a little physical with him. Mm -hmm. use, <laughs> yeah, usually, <laughs> usually they're going to pass that thing. But if he's a 9-3 three, three-point shooter, uh, you really want to be inside the three-point line, you know, be long and push him short side. Yeah, what, what about to specifically to the, to the length? So when you have a guy like Seku... Step behind the three-point line. I know you can't shoot, <laughs> but here's the thing, Demar. Like your length at that point, where is it that you know you want to have a pickup point? Are you just outside of touching distance? I mean, where is it that you gauge your? Yeah, I think out? that's the biggest thing is just outside of touching distance because yeah. you don't want them to blow by you. You know, if I get up on them, Seiko might 
You know, these, oh, you, you never know. know. Seku is not blowing by anybody. <laughs> you never no. know. <laughs> you you never might, know. He might. Do, All right, when, let's when say are you asking for Brent. When are you asking for the the somebody to come to that next spot on defense? Like, if you're the first line of defense, like you talked about, where is that second line of defense when you're pushing me this way? Is it the wing or is it somebody coming from? No, usually, guys shoot the three point ball so great that you can't leave the wing. You can't leave the wing. Basically, you just stay at home. Basically, we'll have a mid, you know, have a big man. Once you get in the paint, he's going to come show. Yeah. But you never leave a strong never side. Leave well, I will tell you, to Damari's point, and you hold the ball, okay? You're the offensive player. But to Damari's point, a lot of the teams, Seku, nowadays are not giving up this three-point shot in the corner. Point so three, when yeah. the drive happens, the defensive responsibility then comes from the big that's on the bottom side here. Damari's going to filter him here, but the big's going to step over and assist him. Let's talk about a guy who does shoot the three, and then maybe what you process if Sekou actually turns into Clay Thompson. Oh, I'm, I'm running him off the three-point line. This is a – I'm a percentage guy. I'm a number guy. So I feel like this is – this shot is way – will cost you more in the game than these little two-pointers. So I'm trying to run him off the three-point line. Hopefully he'll force him to like a pull-up because that's a way low percentage shot right. than this three-point shot. Good. Look, we're going to come back to line up so we can take a look at your You sure you don't suit. want me outside the three-point line again? Say who. <laughs> You're not a shooter. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, that shows the difference between a guy that can get it done everywhere, like Brent Barry, and guys like us, right? Well, it's not really fair when you got six, eight guarding five. There's not a lot getting done when Damari Carroll's guarding you, trust me. Thanks for <laughs> oh, coming in. I appreciate your time, man. Thank you. <laughs>